We're glad to have you with us. It's 837 at AM 1160 WCCS. And as part of our coverage of local news, we like to hear from the schools every now and then. So today we have the Salzburg Middle High School with us with today here on Hometown Magazine. And we're going to start off with Cassidy Richards, who is a member of Students Against, let me guess, let me see if I get this right finally, Students Against Destructive Decisions, right? Yes. Okay. Cassidy, uh, what, first off, what year are you? I am a junior. You're a junior this year. Okay. Are you looking forward to continuing to SAD in your senior year? Yes. Okay. Now, you were just at a conference. Tell us a little bit about the conference. Well, on November 18th, the junior and senior class officers of Salzburg High School, myself included, attended the Pennsylvania Students Against Destructive Decisions, or SAD conference at Seven Springs Mountain Resort. At this conference, we were first introduced to the speaker, Mr. Juan Doe, who is an American Ninja Warrior contestant who motivates and teaches kids how to have the positive attitude everyone says you need to sustain. Through his speech, the students were engaged and entertained while learning how to keep how to help others battling depression. Wow, that's actually very good to have a celebrity like that. Of course, American Ninja Warrior having a popular run on uh, television this past summer. And uh, what was it like to meet him and to get to uh, get to listen to him speak? It was a awesome experience like he was so outgoing he danced for us he showed us his really? dance he had to do in college <laughs> yeah for an icebreaker to show us that he wasn't afraid of us we shouldn't be afraid of him mm -hmm. to participate all right excellent did you get a chance to talk with him one-on-one -on -one, or did other members of your sad group do that yes we actually did me and my friend abby peace got a picture with him and he actually liked it on Instagram. So Hey, not bad. Not bad when you have a speaker reach out like that. What are some of the activities that SAD Club's going to be getting involved with as the months progress into the school year? Um, they will do, like, different memorials. I know a couple of schools are starting them because mm -hmm. it was talked about at the SAD conference. Uh -huh. um, more awards will be given out. Um, SAD's, like, doing more chapter of the year stuff. Okay. And what was the one thing that you took away from that conference that you'll remember beside, uh, from, from either the speech or meeting other members of SAD from schools across the area? Um, my friend from dance, I knew her father passed, but I never knew how. And at this conference, she had the opportunity to speak with the CEO of SAD, uh -huh. like SAD National. Yeah. And I learned that um, she had trouble dealing with her father's death in a drunk driving accident. Mm -hmm. It was really tragic, and SAD was her outlet for that, ah. her coping mechanism. Ah, I see. So SAD really helped her in the morning process. Well, Cassidy, great report. Thank you very much. Let's now have Olivia Statler come to the microphone. Olivia, what, uh, what grade level are you? I'm also a junior. Also a junior, and you were part of a recent project involving books for the middle school students. Yes. Um, the 6th and 7th grade students chose from amongst their favorite books and created online descriptions of what the book was about and why younger students should read it. They used a program called Paltoon to record their voice, and they uploaded it as a file so that the younger students could use a QR reader to scan the promos. Um, these promos were made to intrigue younger students to read more difficult books, and some of the books included Hatchet, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim and James and the Giant Peach. A couple of books I do recognize, Mrs. Frisbee and James and the Giant Peach. Um, so these are kind of like, uh, going back, harkening back to my generation, reading Rainbow, kind of yes. like those, uh, but don't take my word for it segments. Yeah. Now, this is actually quite different because you said that you used a process to record their voices with a, with a special internet program? Yeah, there's a, like a program online that you could, I'm assuming they use iPads and they, you can record your voice and talk about the book, and then you can change it into a file so that it just gives you a little like barcode, mm -hmm. and you can just scan it, and it takes you directly to that file, and you can listen to it. Oh, okay, so it's a quick access, and yeah. that way kids can get a chance to hear other kids talking about the book and why they think it's it. Yeah. Now, is there a book that you would have considered if you were in their shoes? Um, I read Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. I like that book, so I'm sure whoever... Did that book did a good job? Okay, excellent. It. And you were part of, and you and your group were part of the the process in getting that all together. No, mom, my gifted counselor, Miss Jake, and helped the English teacher, Mr. Riley. They did that as a part of their assignment in their class. All right, excellent. Well, Olivia, good report. Thank you very much for sharing that, and I hope a lot of kids are inspired to read because of it. And let's move on now. We have 
Lizzie Zapak. I hope I'm saying the name right, Lizzie. I, I am. You can yes. say yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Lizzie, what will, and Lizzie, I understand that uh, you had a big, uh, big event as well with the volleyball team. Uh, yeah, at the start of Thanksgiving break, Salisbury High School students participated in a single elimination style volleyball tournament, and each student donated five dollars and formed teams of six to eight two students. Proceeds being split between the local food bank and the junior class. There was uh, two divisions, junior and senior high, and the winning teams faced off against the team of teachers. Uh, the winner of the entire thing, the senior high team, was chicken and biscuits. Wow. <laughs> okay, so Shaken and Biscuits won that one, and they got to face off against the the faculty, right? Yes. And how they do against the faculty? I believe they won. Wow, not bad. When it, not bad when the students can take down the faculty. I remember Battle of the Classes way back, uh, a similar type of fundraiser. So, um, how successful though was it uh, financially? Did you, did it raise a lot of money? I believe they did raise quite a bit of money for both the food bank and the junior class, but I'm not sure exactly. And the junior and raising money for the junior class means uh, maybe like a senior class trip or something along those lines. Yeah, it supports stuff like class trips and their prom and all kinds of stuff like that. All right, excellent. Have you um, and what part did you play? Were you one of the organizers in this? Uh, I actually participated on a junior high team. And your team name? Uh, we were Team Trash Party. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it sounds like you all had a you, your uh, the whole uh, the whole of the school had a fun time. Did the students get to see the tournament in action? Yeah, some students at the end of the day during the finals of each division came down if they donated a dollar to mm -hmm. come and watch. And throughout the day, students that had gym class sat and watched the just the regular. Tournament. Just the regular tournament games going on. Well, it's good that you gave them an extra opportunity to watch the finals, and that was probably a boost to the fundraising efforts as well. Excellent report. Thanks again, Lizzie. And we want to thank all of our guests. We'll thank them all again. Cassidy Richards, Olivia Statler, and Lizzie Zapak for joining us on Hometown Magazine. And ladies, have a wonderful holiday and a, hopefully a good rest of the school year, okay? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you again to Cassidy Richards, Olivia Statler, and Lizzie Zapak for joining us on Hometown Magazine. And remember, if you missed the interview, you can catch it online. We'll have it posted on our website, heritageconference.net.